Hello everyone, my name is Javonna Joyce. I am a student leadership assistant here in the Marvin Center for Student Leadership. And today we're gonna to be talking about inclusive Zoom practices, COVID-19 style. So to start off, let's think about, you can pause or you can uh, take a moment to think about what you think about when you hear inclusive practices. Whatever comes to mind, um, something maybe you've done or something that your friends or coworkers have talked to you about. So to start us off, my first tip is to always do introductions. Introductions are really important because you want to feel as connected with your members for your organization or event as much as possible. So if you are able to do introductions and don't have such big of a group, um, some things to share during introductions is things like name, pronouns, class year, major, involvements, and you can add something fun like favorite color, favorite movie, or favorite toothpaste, which is a Marvin Center favorite. <laughs> a second um, tip for inclusive Zoom practices is setting expectations. So the importance of setting expectations is that you are going to want your members to know what to expect from your organization, your event, and what is expected of them. So an example of expectations uh, for a virtual setting could be no inappropriate Zoom backgrounds, uh, putting your pronouns in your name like I have here, um, respect for everyone within the time of your session or whatever you think is best for your organization or your event that you're gonna be hosting. The third Zoom tip is putting pronouns in your Zoom name. So ooh, there are two ways that you can actually do this. Um, one way is doing it through the Zoom website. So you can go to your profile on Zoom, press edit name, and you can put your pronouns after your last name. Um, and when you save edits, it'll be able to save for all of your future uh, calls. Or you can go ahead and try the second way and rename yourself during a call. So let's say it didn't save or you forgot to do it um, the first way. You can go to your video box and you can press rename if your host allows you to rename yourself. And you can go ahead and add your pronouns that way. The fourth Zoom tip is using closed captioning. So closed captioning is really important because, um, especially during a virtual setting, uh, especially for those of hard of hearing. So, or for anyone's benefit, sometimes it's just easier to follow along and see the captions, especially if there's some connection issues. Uh, so two ways of doing this is when you're sharing a video through share your screen, uh, let's say you're on YouTube. Uh, there should be a button that says closed captions or subtitles. So if, for example, if you were on YouTube, you could go to the right corner and click the CC button. If that is accessible is that if that's a, available for your video that you're sharing. And uh, the second way of doing this is Zoom actually has a really cool feature um, of adding captions to your meeting. So the way that you would do this was to um, go to support.zoom.us and in the search, board, search bar type closed captioning and um, there should be some forms for you to read through uh, for various ways you can add closed captioning to your meetings and you can choose whichever is best for your organization or event. Another Zoom tip is equal access to shared content. So this is really important because you want to engage your members as much as possible. So the way that you can do this is to make sure that they have all of the information that you're going to be sharing during your meeting. So you can do this two ways. You can do it before the meeting um, or event. So you can send your participants an email uh, or text them or whatever is best for your organization or event. Or during the meeting, you could even send it through the Zoom chat uh, to make sure that um, everyone has the information you're gonna be going over. Uh, so that way that everyone can feel connected and engaged during the meeting. Or you can do both to make sure that your participants are extra um, prepared. My last tip is feedback. So feedback is fantastic because the only way you're going to know if something works is through your members experience. So make sure to ask your participants or members for feedback. So if you feel like maybe something um, 
isn't working or if you feel like you tried something new and you weren't sure how your participants received it, you can ask them personally how they felt about the thing that you did. Uh, make sure to be open to new ideas. So if, for example, these Zoom tips, you can uh, be open to this and possibly implementing these in any of your events for your organizations. Um, or if you feel that your organization's members might be more comfortable uh, through anonymously telling you um, some feedback tips, you can set up a form, maybe like Google Forms, or um, there's so many things out there that you can set up, but setting up an anonymous form to send to your participants and ask them for their feedback that way, so you might get a better response through that uh, anonymous tip. So thank you uh, so much for coming to this video of um, inclusive Zoom practices. If you ever have any questions, you can reach out to bjsu.edu slash leadership for more details for the Marvin Center. Um, if you're watching this before uh, our COVID-19 programming ends, you can attend the other COVID-19 programming sessions. Uh, you can check out our leadership contingencies <laughs> uh, certificates. And you can even check out our BGSU Leadership Achievement Award. And all of the details for these things will be on that website for the Marmon Center. And you can go ahead and also follow us on social media and um, look out for more events like this or even request a Marmon Center experience. Thank you so much for clicking on this video or uh, sharing this with your organization.